What is a marsh? What comes to mind when you hear the term marsh? Well, when I look over my left shoulder, I'm looking out at a marsh. And what I see is a low area that is wet, and it's an area where water movements are, are nil or very, very slow. And correspondingly, I see a vegetation, which is characteristic of a marsh. In this case, it's a special kind of marsh called a salt marsh. But we find that these low energy areas that we call salt marshes are usually up in embayments, areas where water movements are, are uh, not very rapid. And therefore, we find that the sediments that we are there in the marsh are sediments that are very, very fine. We get down to a layer, like, just like clay. And we find that the vegetation is rather restricted to those species that we call halophytes, plants that like tolerate salt. When I think of a salt marsh, I think of a beautiful, quiet place with uh, water streaming in gently into canals and up onto mud flats adjacent to great gardens of, of uh, salt cord grass. I think of birds flying in and feeding on some of the fishes here that are uh, growing up in these areas, the nursery areas for many fish, which are in turn feeding on invertebrates down here in the mud, climbing into tubes and crawling out, feeding themselves on dead and decaying plant matter, on particles in the water column. And so I think of a whole ecosystem here that's nurturing some of the fishes, some of the uh, crabs, and some of the birds that are flying along here in the Pacific Flyway, stopping here for dinner, for rest, before moving on to the next salt marsh. We find that also with the salt marshes being flat, these are great areas to fill and to build on. And we find a lot of places like San Francisco Bay and up here in Humboldt Bay that we've had encroachment. And for example, with diking, we've had areas cut off that have been changed into farmland. And also with the advent of the railroad, a good route for the railroad, they had to form a dike to keep the seawater out. And correspondingly, they developed floodgates, which allowed the land behind the dike to become areas for pasture. Without these marshes, we have a lack of a whole ecosystem. We have a lack of a place for these birds to stop. We'll certainly begin to lose species that are moving along that flyway. We'll lose the natural ecosystem service we get out of a marsh here that is essentially taking dead and decaying matter and turning it into animals and plants and fish and birds and things that we can appreciate.